Hey guys, Dave from Nerdarchy for Nerds, by Nerds, hanging out with this nerd. I'm Ted. And uh, today we want to talk to you about our next upcoming game of uh, Shadowrun powered by the Cypher system. Before we get into that though, why don't you jump down to the description below, sign up for Nerdarchy the newsletter. It's a great way to get gaming tips as well as learn how to game with us. So, you know, a lot of discussion and debate went into what we were going to play next, and, um, you know, our, our, for our, uh, Scott Garraby, like, if you guys have paid attention to any of his games or uh, the gameplays or the videos he does with us, he's got a very unique um, philosophy when it comes to gaming. Right. He's, he's, he's more into the, you know, run... Wham, bam, thank you, ma'am. <laughs> run, run shorter uh, session arcs. And move on to the next game because you never know. He doesn't know. think your group's going to last long enough. You know, there's a couple things he does. One is he it's an excel, always an accelerated uh, game as far as growth. Right. Um, you know whatever the system allows for. It. The other thing is his rule of thumb is three uh, three five seven. Right. That's how many sessions he wants to run. He wants to tell one overarching story and then move on to another another uh, campaign. And you know, his, his, you know, his thing reasoning is, you know, players don't stick around long enough to do long games. You know, players want instant gratification; they want to cruise through things. So, but oddly enough, we've convinced him, and I think, you know, I don't think we actually said it to him, is but he said it to us, is that he wants to do something that he doesn't ever do, and and, and we've just recently started doing it within the last two years, and that is session zero. All right. Um, his Star Wars game, even though I feel like we were pulling it back together, he felt like he had two different groups at the table, and the, you know they were going to never come, fully come together and form, you know, one so, solid t team. So after four sessions, as 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 much fun fun as it was, he he ended the Star Wars game and decided we're going to move on to the the next thing. And so we had two two overwhelming things that people wanted to play. Uh, Star Wars, uh, and he was going to totally not say that, and 5th edition Dungeons and Dragons. But Nerdarchy, because we run the channel, uh, <laughs> said, no, we want we want to expose our, 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 our fans and our friends out there to different games. Right. So we, we have a, a rich history in D&D. We've played lots of Mutants and Masterminds, and we've got our, our tendrils out looking for n new games, new new things, so that not only can we ourselves get to experience stuff, but so that we can share that with you guys to, so that you can figure out that it's okay to play other games. You don't have to just stick to D&D. Yeah, you know what, too? Like, we're really lucky and fortunate because Scott Garraby is an RPG junkie. Yes. You know, and he, he, he consumes a lot of material, and he at least has a basic understanding of... So many different rule systems. A lot of different rule systems, more so than we do. Right. And, you know, and, and he's willing to run those games for us. And so we love having him at the table because we can play all these different games, and we don't have to invest a huge amount of time in learning the game. We get to just play it, and and that's how I like to learn games anyway. Yeah, that's definitely definitely how it best. I made it like right. halfway through the Dresden book, and I'm like, and I just stopped reading it. I've started reading Dungeon World, <laughs> stopped reading it. I, I just don't do as much reading as I used to. Mm -hmm. and I, I just don't consume information that way. Like I can't like I I can't sit and learn the mechanics just by sitting there reading like I, i've i've found that when i've tried i'm rereading and rereading and rereading before i finally like, get okay. it you need to do it like you know yeah. that that's like when i play board games i'm like ted i don't want to <laughs> you just just tell me how to play let's just play and that's how i do it so for, that brings us to okay so once we threw out another star wars game and and playing fifth edition me and ted went to war over what we're going to play next so i was i was saying i want to play shadow run i think the world is is really unique i think um you know it, it's a it's a very big diversion away from the typical D and D adventuring party mindset, like the the core built in part of you guys are running together, you know you're you're typically all being hired together type of situation. Well, it, it's the game is called Shadow Run because the players are shadow runners, right? Uh, you know, so like, but you know, the whole idea is that you know it's almost like this dystopian future 
where everything's run by corporations and and the governments. Um, well, I mean, it's it's beyond governments. The big the big ten are literally in control. Of yeah, everything. yeah, but I'm talking power structures. Yeah, the, okay. the governments are still there. So everyone, or the populations, all conform to those groups, right? To these big, these big power structures, and to the point where, like, you may only marry within your corporation. Like, it's it's really that much. Well, there's these fringers, right? People that don't conform, and they're the shadow runners. Well, these different organizations, uh, the big the Big Ten corporations. There's also smaller corporations that would come into play. Right. Uh, governments and criminal organizations. Sometimes they need agents and people they need to use that they can disavow, right. and it has nothing to do with them. And that's where your fringers, your shadow runners, come into play. But that's like kind of sidetracked us from me and Ted were just, you know kind of like going back and forth on what to play. I'm like I want to play Numenera. He wants to play Shadowrun. I I actually like Shadowrun, but every time. You know, I talk to someone about the game, like they talk about all the crunch and all the how rules heavy it is. Mm -hmm. And at, the older I get, the more I just want rules like games. And I'm like, you know, I hear fantastic things about the new Monera game, right. uh, about the Cypher system. Uh, Scott, Scott doesn't like the worlds as much, but I've seen some gameplays on uh, YouTube from SR2 Joker for uh, new Monera. And, uh, you know, the way he did it, they, they looked amazing and looked like a ton of fun. Um, so I, you know, so I was all about it. I, from what I know of the lore, I was very intrigued about it. So we came up with a compromise. The compromise was we'll play the world of Shadowrun using the rules of the Cipher system. Which it's funny because Cipher system takes from a lot from. Um, I want to say it takes very very lightly from a watered down version of D and D. Mm. It takes heavily from uh, Fate Core. Right. As well, in my opinion. Um, and essentially, like, your character is defined by one narrative sentence that consists of an adjective, a noun, noun and a verb. <laughs> and then, you know, and from and from that from that sentence, there's uh, different mechanics that get kind of, like, templated onto your character. And there's only, there's only like, four character classes. Mm -hmm. There's, you know, your adept, which is a mage. There's your explorer character, which, which is, is your rogue. Yeah, it's your rogue, your skill character. You have your speaker. Your speaker, which is the the face character mm -hmm. or bard, and then you also have a warrior. And you only have three. You you only have three stats. Right. You, so yeah, it's uh, might, intellect, and speed. Right. And you know, depending on what your class is, will determine what your starting stats. Yeah, are. your base stats are, and then you have some points to play with, and then that descriptive sentence we talked to that changes up everything even more. Yeah, even more, right? So it's really interesting. Um, the DM does not roll dice in Cipher; it's always the player. You're either you're either challenging to do something or defending against something, right. and it's a one through ten system for difficulty rating, with a multiplier of three. It sounds a lot more difficult than it actually is. <laughs> if something is a challenge rating of one, you need to get a three or higher on the die, two, six or higher on the die, nine, you know, or, or th challenge rating three, nine or higher on the die, so on and so forth, 30 being the highest. Right. And then based on your character and what your character can do and, and is good at, you, you will either lower the difficulty or you will get a bonus to the roll based on your stat. Uh, so, so it's it's. I think it's going to be very intuitive once we get started. Right. For, you know, there's not a whole lot going on there, and, and and I like that. So you can spend more time thinking about the story and role playing and doing the game than crunching numbers. Right. Uh, you know, the, the, the there's a there's a very broad skill system, which at certain points it gets a little wonky, where it's like most of the skills are really broad, and then there's like jumping. <laughs> it's like so. It's like my only complaint with the cipher system as of yet is, is uh, these real narrow skills put in with these really broad ones, and it seems like you're really they're really penalizing like the, the athletic or explorer type character, because because like you know why not just go to, a, you know like a, a D and D system for making those broad like you know just saying athletics or mm -hmm. acrobatics you know and just grouping them together because it's not even a skill heavy system. Right. Like it'd be different if you're like you're gonna buy tons of skills. Mm -hmm. But you're not. You're gonna have like two. You know, the skilled character has four. Yeah. You know? So it's right. not like, yeah. You know, it, it, it's just weird. to me that 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 one aspect of the game just seems a little weird. I I would agree with that. I I find it pretty amusing. Uh, you know, one of the benefits of you know one aspect of my character is like, oh, you get proficiency in any skill involving anything electrical. <laughs> yeah, that's what I mean. Like so, like there's things like that, and then you know, and then you go and be like, all right, you can, you're you're skilled at jumping. 
Like, huh? <laughs> like, <laughs> it just struck. It did, that just strikes strikes me as odd. Yeah, you know, I don't know why Monty Cook did that, especially when they made everything else so awesome. Right. So. So stay tuned. Session zero is uh, is going to be coming up soon. Yeah, we're and actually going to do two. We're actually going to do two videos uh, to go along before the pre before we actually start playing that game. We're going to do a session, the set full uh, full on session zero and the social contract. And we're going to do a social contract. So we got a bunch of people playing together, have not played together very much, and we just want to show you guys what a social contract might look like. So uh, yeah. Give us your feedback in the comments. Is there anything else you want to want to see? While you're at it, like, share, and subscribe. You can uh, head over to nerdarchy.com and check out some sweet swag and digital merchandise. So until next time, stay, stay nerdy. nerdy.